You're listening to the Colts Blue Zone Podcast with Mike Chappell and Dave Griffiths. Inside the Fox 59 CBS 4 Podcast Studio, welcome to the Colts Blue Zone Podcast. Alongside Mike Chappell and Matt Adams, I'm Dave Griffiths. We appreciate you tuning in for another week of dramatic Colts offseason uh, movings forward. And uh, or or not moving forward. A lot of activity, yeah, just exactly. not what people really wanted. Uh huh. Pretty much, or not what people expected, uh, or not what people reported. Uh, so, and, and that's about all I'll say about uh, Legarius Sneed not being a Colt. No deal being done. I thought there was a press conference tomorrow. Uh, right. We we got the email, didn't we? Uh, maybe I, I thought I saw something. Uh, but big change is also in store for the NFL season in general in 2024 uh, because the league meetings are this week down in Orlando. We'll talk plenty about uh, what's being said down there. Chris Ballard's down there. Shane Steichen's down there. And we're, although, down, we're down there. It's, they're over now, but... Yes, we're right. Excuse me. Yes. Correct. And, and you, you have gone there in the past. It can be a very valuable resource, and especially if Jim Irsay was talking, I think it would have been pretty important for, for somebody to be down there. We would have sent somebody, but, um, but since we had just spoken to... to um, at least Steichen and Bauer relatively recently at the um, the combine. At the combine, combine. Yeah. Uh, we uh, we de- we decided not not to go down personally. But ESPN Stephen Holder is down there, among plenty of other uh, right. NFL media reporters. But um, so I'll give credit to Stephen for our, a lot of the things we will discuss uh, on the podcast today from some of the- and also James Boyd and yes. Nate Atkins are the star, okay. and then James is with the Athletic, yes, and Colts dot com. So. Mm-hmm. J- just briefly, we were going to go if Jim Mercer was going to was going to have his usual confab with the local indie media. We were going to be there. I had a credential, but with him not. But I'm telling you, from a from a beat writer guy who covers the team, it's invaluable. You get you get 30 minutes at least with your head coach, yeah. and and you just you just get stuff, and then you get. Half an hour, forty-five minutes with, with Chris Ballard, and some stuff you can't use because it's sort of background. But then he he, he explains which he did. Uh, it, it's just incredibly invaluable for for writers who cover a team on a on a daily basis to be there. I've been there often, many times, and then again when you when you get a chance to talk to the owner, it's just it's just great because he can't help himself. He's gonna he's gonna say stuff, and it's always on the record with him. Right, when, right. When so, but no, basically, we, pretty much. But we didn't yeah. go. But it, but some good stuff came out of it. Uh, we'll start there with Legarius Sneed uh, not signing with the Indianapolis Colts, uh, despite all the drama that uh, went forth over the past couple weeks. That we there were did. like two days were crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you 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 told me about it that Saturday when uh, when uh, there was an indication uh, or two. No, that, there was that a report. This was going to happen. Yeah, exactly. There was a, a report. report, an actual report that that it was done, that it was going to happen. <laughs> uh, not true, uh, at all, in the slightest. But he's going to the Tennessee Titans uh, now. Rather, uh, he's playing for Tennessee because Tennessee sent to the Chiefs a 2025 third round pick, so not even a pick this year, next year, and then had a seventh round pick swap this year. The Chiefs and the Titans uh, swap their positions in the seventh round. Well, what what a dramatic cost there for uh, for for the Titans to bring in a, a very good um, cornerback. He's not he's not a Pro Bowler. He's never been a Pro Bowler in his career. I was, but surpri- I was surprised. I was a little bit too. But but he's a solid player, and he got a very good salary, four years, seventy six point four million dollars, um, making him one of the highest paid corners in the league. We always say, what's a player's value? It's what one team will pay. Yep. Forget markets. What, what will one team pay? Mm-hmm. And, and the Titans deemed that he would be that valuable to them, and and so when you look at that contract, chap, I'd imagine based on the. Uh, the, the amount that was given to to Tennessee and then the amount that was given to Snead himself, I mean, amount that was given to the Chiefs and then the amount that was given to Snead himself. If one of those two was holding up the Colts, uh, I would lean toward what Snead eventually got salary-wise. Yeah, the compensation, I can live with that. If you, if, if you thought that guy was enough to, to make a strong push for $15 million a year, whatever, then the compensation is secondary and you don't worry about it. But right. They they were not going to go that high, and again we can. I don't think Chris Bowder really talked about it in depth about how serious was your interest. You know, again that's a relative term. I think they had a serious interest in him, and then when it came to, to what he wanted, they weren't going to do it. And, and conversely, they uh, he he more or less confirmed. You know, we talked about Daniel Hunter, where he got two years, forty nine million from Houston mm-hmm. with the Colts. 
what I was told, the Colts offered more than $49 million, But I, I don't think they went to the $48 million guaranteed. Right. Which is... That's the difference. Which is... <laughs> that's a big difference. It's, yes. yeah, it's, yeah. Now... We, we joked about this last week, Matt, when, when you were out. Like, that that, that, that $1 million, not guaranteed. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That, that, that's, what, uh, that's what did it. Because somebody mentioned, well, maybe... Maybe he went to Houston because of D'Amico Ryans, and, and they, they got more pieces in place, yada, yada. So, well, but, but, but if the Colts had offered $48 million guaranteed, he'd have been here. So it, it's, you, you, at some level, you've got to have a, a line that is just too much. Mm-hmm. And, and maybe part of it is, is battled on the Colts. And, well, we gave Shaq great money and great, and, and great guarantee money, and it didn't pan out long term. Right. You've got to have, and again, what I've always said, and I'll still say this, and people can disagree, but the argument needs, the argument can't be that the Colts don't spend. The argument needs to be that you didn't agree with how they spent it. And and, and that's valid. We, we can, and, and I've not agreed with all of this. I, I hope to goodness they sign a corner, a safety first. They need a safety, a veteran safety. And, and Ballard indicated that's, He's, you know, he understands that, but just make the correct argument. They've spent almost two hundred million dollars, hundred and thirty million, like is guaranteed. It, it's it's money you've guaranteed. Just have your argument in line with 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 the facts, and then we're fine. Yeah, you, you say that everybody needs a line they can't cross, and I'll say this for Chris Ballard: he has lines, and he does not cross them. Period. The only time he really did is when they brought back T. Y. Hilton. Mm-hmm. That's when right. Jamer say. He's- from all indications, he, he sweetened the pot a little bit. Yes, that is the indication. And then after that season, uh, T.Y. Hilton really didn't have much of an NFL future. So Chris, so I'll say this for Chris. He was probably right in that scenario that uh, he had the line for T.Y. And, and Jim Irsay could say from a business aspect, he was right, you know, to, to have Correct. T.Y. on the roster for another year. So so there's kind of – there's there's two ways to look at, the, to look at, uh, to, at that move from several well, years and, ago. And also, again – which people really don't agree with is again, they, the fan base would really have preferred a Daniel Hunter. They would have preferred a Jerry Sneed. Okay. That's fine. And I understand that Hunter would be great with his defense. Yep. Well, I've always talked, you need a guy, but at, at, at the risk of who you would not have brought back all these players. So which ones, and you, you know, you, you talked about Grover Stewart, uh, Kenny Morris probably coming back. Of course, Pittman was maybe, maybe, Zaire Franklin doesn't get his extension, although they knew that how grossly underpaid he was. But somebody, somebody would not be back. Mm-hmm. Taekwondo, I don't know, somewhere. So it's just, again, they, they've made these moves, and, and I am convinced one of the reasons they're sort of running it back is they believe that Anthony Richardson will make that much of a difference, which – we can argue that he's played he's played four games. That's a lot of faith in a guy who's played four NFL games and played how many college games? Like was not it, a lot. It was no, a handful. It was, it was twelve, right, seventeen, right? One, one year. year. Was, and, and, and on top of that, with all they did last year, nine and eight, and this close to, to doing something really good, they had Jonathan Taylor for basically half the year. I mean, when he was really good, so they're really banking on. Guys, two, two, or two of their better players coming back and really making a difference, and and I understand that. It's just you're putting an awful lot of faith in the quarterback. You just are. And then on the other side of the ball, the Colts officially did re-sign Taven Bryan, adding some more depth to that defensive line. We talked about that a bit last week, but that move is now official. And uh, Ballard uh, acknowledged that some youth uh, lack of depth in the defensive backfield kind of held Gus Bradley back last season, saying there's still work to be done there. Um, so, so he, Th- those are leap of faiths there too, because they're they're banking mm-hmm. on Juju Brents, they're banking on Jalen Jones and Dallas Flowers, who had the Achilles. Yep. So, uh, there again, he said there's work to be done, and I've always said too, that what, what none of us like is patience, because we, we there's still time to do things, you know, with free agency, with the draft. You know, I mean, the, the, they could certainly draft a corner. You would expect whoever pick. they draft to be a starter immediately. At, like it's, whether 15, it's a starter 15, or a receiver right. or wherever. It's going to be someone who starts day one. It has to be. In, unless it's a receiver, then, then he's in that mix. The mix. Which is starter. You know, Pittman's a starter. Right. After that, it's sort of a mismatch of, of who gets the, the reps. But he's going to be a major contributor. Yeah, somebody who would get 
40, 50 snaps out of Correct. the 70 snaps, you know, a game. Correct. Which for, for receivers. Yeah. I like, mean, if you could get a contribution like you had from Downs last year from right. somebody that you get at 15 – You'd be pretty good. For that. I, I would be. I would hope hope for something more. To be honest, than Downs, who was a third round pick. I, I would want. I would want something a little bit more. He set a more. rookie record. He did. Rookie record. He did. So so but, but so that's I'm, a good I'm point. Saying at good, the very least, reason, if yeah, you to, could to at least point. get that, I think you'd be you know yes somewhere in the ballpark. All right. You'd be all right. Um. So uh, Julian Blackman still no team for him. He, he's coming. I, I'll, I you think would, so. I think he's back. Okay. I think he found out that. Market's not there for him at what he the, wants the market, to be. The market he wanted isn't there. And Stephen Holder wrote, wrote that from Ballard that they've reengaged discussions. So I, I think that gets done, I'm guessing, two years and throw a number, I don't know, 10 million, 5 million a year. I don't know. But I, I just think that and this is a case where the player had the chance to go out and see what's out there. Mm-hmm. And he's a very good player. He led the, league, led the team in interceptions last year. The injury he's coming off of was a shoulder, nothing significant. So, now he's had injury issues in the past, but I think this would be a really good. But but re-signing him doesn't alleviate the fact that you still need a veteran safety. So, but I, I really think in the next before the draft, I think Blackman gets done. I just do. And I have no problem with Blackman going out and trying to test uh, and and push the limit, push the envelope for for a contract. He was basically the youngest safety out there, mm-hmm. looking in, in free agency. He's twenty five years old. And he's coming off the best season of his career, having four interceptions and, and being certainly one of the solid cor- uh, solid safeties out there in free agency. The trouble is NFL teams just aren't spending on safety uh, during and, and, this free and, and agency. And teams cut safeties. Yes. Team cut, so, so there's a lot of veteran safeties out there, which has to hurt. Right. Had to hurt his, his appeal uh, on the open market. Completely. So so maybe, like you said, it's a two-year deal, and he's able to go back out at 27 and, and try to test the water. It's like yet. Michael Pittman. He's going to be 28 or 29 when he gets another shot. Not too bad. At, 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 good for him. Yeah, exactly. Go, go that Jack Doyle route. Kept, <laughs> kept, keep getting those contracts. At a higher level. Yeah. At seriously. a higher money level. Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, Shane Steichen, also speaking with Colts Media this week, uh, says he does expect Anthony Richardson to be ready for spring practice. So, so that is the first big – That's a big deal. Dr- drop a news right there that hey we don't have to wait until OTAs in May we don't have to wait until training camp and and, and when they actually say hey we expect him back for spring practice that is something that most executives or coaches can be loath to do at times chap. and they seldom do it we're not going to put a time frame on this well they they did and, and I whine and complain about them not putting a timeline. Right. I'd be like, you have a timeline. I don't know right. what it is. Don't, I, don't say you don't have a timeline. You know it. You, you, know, you're just, yeah. you just don't want to share but he, it. He's being open with it this time. So, yay. Right. Hooray. Right. So, at the very least, he's on schedule. And, again, as I wrote, the only schedule that matters is is that he's going to be ready to at some level for off-season work, which begins April 15th, I believe. 15th, yeah. I believe 15th it is. For, date that for returning coaches, yes. In, in the first couple of weeks, it's, it's strength, conditioning, and all that stuff. And then they, they, they get on the field the next week, like it, the third week, I think, is on positional work. It can't. I don't think it's DBs against receivers. It's positional work. And then they get going. He needs every rep he can get. He just does. Uh, and he needs every rep with – Michael Pittman and, and Jonathan JT, Taylor. Get JT in there, man. Mm-hmm. I, I've been saying that they were together for, for one play. It was two. Come on, chat. I, I, I swear to God, I, I sat down yesterday and I looked at that stretch in the Tennessee game, and it was the first play they were out there, and it was a three-yard run. Then he was out there another another play for – then he was pass protection. So he was out there for two plays. So, okay. But not only were they only on the field for two plays in this season, they did nothing – in 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 OTAs in training camp because JT wasn't right. He, he was here. He was sort, there, but so, you're sort of there. <laughs> so, but th- this is invaluable. They will, as Shane Steichen told reporters, they're going to monitor him, which we would expect. But the fact that he's out, there, they had a somebody threw out the show, social media clip of of, of AR at. Uh, Cheering uh, on the Gators. Oh, uh, and he was he house. was windmilling that arm like you're, you're checking boxes. Range of motion, yes, sir. Uh huh. Looks good. And and we have no idea how in depth or how much depth there's been to his workouts, but you know he's been pushing it. Mm-hmm. So that they will. Th- this will be a case in in the the first month of OT or not OTAs, but all season work. They will have to hold him back because he'll be ready to go. But the fact that he'll be probably pretty much ready for OTAs and then you take the summer off and they'll throw in the summer and then training camp is invaluable. And, and, and this is this is the reason that uh, 
like Chap was alluding to earlier, Matt, that uh, the Colts staff and front office is optimistic for this coming season that they didn't feel like they needed to go all in, quote unquote, uh, our, our favorite phrase here, uh, going all in uh, in free agency. That uh, If they had signed Hunter, is that all in? I mean, would that, would that have satisfied the all-in mentality? I think that that would have certainly been helpful for for, fa- for the fans. But you, you're you're not here to please the fans necessarily. You're you're here As to, they say, to if win you, games. If you're too worried about pleasing the fans, one day you will be with them. Right. But uh, but Anthony Richardson's the reason. So we'll, we'll be here to see what he can do this off season. Well, it's you know, like you said, they were they were play away from from maybe getting into the playoffs last year. This is a nine and eight team uh, going in and. You're like, well, why do they just run it back? Well, Chris Ballard has his way of building rosters. He has a strong belief that this is the way things should go. They they did shoot their shot. It's not like they didn't try to put some guys. They put some feelers out on some guys. The Daniil Hunter stuff didn't work out. So, you know, at that point when they it was clear they weren't going to be able to get him, then we started to see all those deals start coming because through. Because those guys, guys. If, if you don't, then those guys are on the market. Yep. Right. And then you're going to lose a couple of them. Yep. Because again, they they tend to overvalue what they got. But Kenny Moore was one of the is is one of the best nickels. I mean, mm-hmm. can can you imagine? I mean, the state of the secondary is also pretty fraught. Is already pretty oh, fraught as yeah. it is. Can you imagine it without <laughs> Kenny Hunter back or Kenny Moore? I'd back? rather no. not. No. Yeah. In, in in Grover's now, I I don't know if Grover's would have got 39 million on the market, but he would have got a good offer. Uh, uh, so, so again, once Plan A doesn't doesn't materialize you've got to quickly transition to, to your next level and, and that's retaining your own guys mm-hmm. and uh, grover to, to his credit said he didn't even unpack or pack anything he's so he, good <laughs> man i knew i was coming back i didn't pack anything and you, you've got to be i mean fr- from a fan's perspective you've got to be I, i've seen probably in the couple interviews i've watched with steichen i have probably seen him smile more in the last couple of months than I saw him do all of last season. And I, I know it was his first coaching, ex- head coaching experience here in the pros, and they lost their quarterback, and, and it was tough week to week. But, my goodness, when that guy is talking about Anthony Richardson, he is excited. Mm-hmm. So, and, and all Colts Nation as well, as they should be. Yeah, because he just, he just said, again, he, he admits it's a small sample size, four starts, 173 snaps, and I, I don't know what his – he only completed 60% of his passes, but you just saw things. You, you saw the way he, he ran the huddle. You saw the decisive, the strong arm. And we talked about the fourth and two against Houston. What if AR is out there on fourth and two? Don't you think they convert? Absolutely. So, uh, again, I, it, it, it's, there's a little bit of nervousness because you're banking on what you saw and what, what, you're, what you're anticipating. But it, it's just – you almost have to. This guy is your future. If he's not your future, what's the future? And, you know, we're going to see in the draft five quarterbacks taken in the top 13, 14 picks. Which That's the, the best, Col- best possible yeah, scenario. The Colts as say, many as you can. Go you, seven. You, you can't find six, really. <laughs> But uh, that, that's what that's where teams they've got. If you don't have the guy, don't we? You beat it today. If you don't have the guy, you haven't got a chance. Mm-hmm. So Richardson has to be the guy because if he's not, and you'll find out in two years, I don't know. Mm-hmm. You've wasted the rest of your roster. Jonathan Taylor is two years older, and he'll be a free agent. And then Quentin Nelson, and on and on. It, th- there's so many examples of teams believing they had the guy jacksonville tennessee and when he's not the guy your roster has got to be turned over and then you start you're starting over if you look elsewhere uh at down at the nfl owners meetings as i mentioned earlier you will not see jim ursay but kalen ursay jackson is down there representing the team and uh made an appearance on the pat mcafee show uh, saying that uh jim is not quite recovered enough yet to to make the trip he said he's a quote tough dude and expected a, quote, long road to recovery, and he's getting, quote, better every day. So that, that's the, the latest Jim Irsay update, which is uh, about what we expected going into the weekend, that, uh, that he would not be down there, that turned out to be right, and that he is improving uh, better than he was uh, a couple months ago. So hopefully we see him during the draft like we usually do, and uh, then it will be... A, uh, a time to ask uh, questions about more than just draft picks at that point. But nevertheless, glad to hear from straight from the Ursa family uh, on the record officially 
that uh, right. Jim Irsay is is okay and getting better. Well, again, I talked to him. Was it two weeks ago, three weeks ago, whatever right. it is? And he was, and he was still in the hospital from major leg surgery. So uh, he he made it clear, pretty clear that he that he wouldn't be there as much as he wants to be there. So you're right. The next the next the next you know measuring point will be in the draft because he always talks to us on that second day. Is it on oh, Saturday? Usually the third day. Third day. It's, okay, yeah, Saturday. Which is Saturday. Yeah. So and. and I, I really question whether he'll get much into the medical issues. I just, I just don't, uh, and that's fine. I, the, the whole thing is, is how are you doing, and and are are you back from from the fan base and from the team point is, are you back steering things? Mm-hmm. I mean, your hands are on the wheel, or is is it Carly and Kalen and your and your not to say advisory? That's he's not he's not an advisor, <laughs> but but are, are things back the way that they've been? So maybe he'll surprise us and go more in depth in, in his medical issues. I just part of me just thinks that's not going to happen this time. He's an advisor in the sense that I would advise you to listen to what he says. I'd or, advise you to remember that the, <laughs> this, 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 this is a vote of one. Uh-huh, exactly. Uh, plenty more action going on down the NFL owners meetings and making the league look uh, a bit different and in some ways dramatically different uh, next year. Uh, perhaps uh, one of the more significant ones is saying goodbye to the hip drop tackle. It involves the uh, tackle where a defensive player wraps his arms around the runner and unweights himself by swiveling and dropping his hip slash lower body and landing on and trapping the runner's legs. That sounds them. complicated, but when you see it, you know exactly what they're talking about. Exactly. It's what um, what injured. Was it Mark Andrews, the tight end, or last year for, for the Baltimore yes. Ravens? There's one of the more recent famous examples. But all you have to do, if you, if you, if you don't know what we're talking about, like go, go to YouTube, you know, or, or go to Google. Um, and you can get a very clear idea of and what they it show, is. And they showed a clip of several instances at the owners' meetings yes. about what this is. So it is now a 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down for the offense if someone tackles in this way. And the competition committee uh, said that hip drop tackles have a higher injury rate than regular 20%, tackles. 20%, I thought they said, which is higher. Yeah. The, 20 times higher, which is different than 20%. No, yeah, that's, that's quite a bit. That, that's what, 2,000%? And, and they mentioned what the, uh, Richard McKay, who's is he chairman or vice chairman of the long-time competition committee, they sort of think there's going to be not as many hip drop tackle penalties in a game, but you're going to see it when they do the review and guys get fined for it. Right. So on Fridays we'll get, no, this guy was, he he, he was fined, whatever, but he wasn't penalized. This is just going to be another split second decision that officials have to make and they're already making a bunch matt i can tell you who is not a fan of the hip drop tackle rule is that, that is kenny moore? Ken- kenneth moore the the second yes and, and zaire franklin zaire as well uh but but yeah kenny's been pretty uh pretty vociferous about it online on twitter saying asking questions here and there it is not challengeable by the way no if uh, if they if they rule it uh, tough tough beans uh you cannot challenge it it cannot be reviewed it cannot be overturned so uh, defensive players are going to have to going to have to put this right up there in their noggin that you cannot do this or else kind of like the, the horse collar exactly of that that happened what is that 15 years ago now maybe that that I came think that in? sounds long 10, 15 uh, too years long ago, ago but, maybe but, 10 years ago but it, again if you watch it it, it dramatically there, there's injury concerns yeah. the way you drag a guy down yep so on, and, the, on the horse collar mm-hmm. saying you can still do it if it's between the tackles if i remember correctly because yes we've seen that a couple times like oh that was a horse collar well yes it was but, but at that part of the field it's okay you just can't do it when they're outside that box right so uh, so this is one that, that you cannot do at, at any point i believe is what i, the rule I get is. To, I, I saw some of the, some of the clips and I, I I had a hard time myself mm-hmm. trying to figure out what was swivel hip drop tackle and what was guy dragging guy down from behind. Right now, clearly, when the player rolls up on the other player's legs, that is caused by that motion. Right. Some of the other stuff I saw, I I, I did have a hard time differentiating. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think some fans are going to be the same way on that. And, and that's why you maybe you're going to see more fines than you are penalties. Because mm-hmm. we were talking about that in the newsroom uh, when you see it in fast motion during a game 
that's going to be harder to, right. to to get the determination and i think that you're right with what mckay said on on the fines that's might be how they legislate this out of the game mm -hmm. so so that'll be interesting to see exactly how it is legislated right. here in the first year um I, i'm sure that it will lead to people being upset uh nevertheless uh, uh, on both sides uh of it so uh but but eventually it'll be like the horse collar eventually you'll deal with it that exactly five years seven years down the road you're going to have far, far fewer of them because players will be, A, that now younger players are going to have to be taught not to do right. this because I'm, players are taught to do this in, in, in younger younger age right. brackets Levels, right. like on, on how to tackle to if you're trying to tackle someone from behind. Now Le you can't teach people with the this. helmet, they're, trying, they're doing yeah. what they can to get that yeah. out of exactly. it. Exactly. So, so you see that and, and you see those those telling signs now to let you know that it's it's a like targeting penalty in college football especially like if you lower the head and, and lead with the crown of the head that's it right there period Run, running backs in, in the nfl you it's lead, yep. lower your lower yep. your helmet you're going to get penalized yep. or fine can't do it so so i'm sure after some time and after some penalties thrown and after some discussion on all the talking head shows we will get some very clear-cut indicators of when this is going to be called when it's not going to be called but in the meantime i think it is going to be frustrating yeah. because and, there's and, It'll so, still be in the game. I mean, yeah. the, the headshots, uh, I think, back to Michael Pittman Jr. last year against Pittsburgh, yep. they're still in the game. It's just, for the most part, they're severely reduced from what they were maybe five years right. ago. Here's something else that's brand new this year. Kickoffs. Uh, the, Strap it in, buddy. This is going to be fun. It is. I agree. Uh, the NFL is following an XFL model here. Uh, props to the XFL, always being willing to push the envelope for many things, even in the first iteration of the XFL. Um, some things did not work, like the two people running for the ball for the in the field. Yeah, exactly. The very first one, someone separates Red Rover, the shoulder. Red Rover, whatever. Exactly. Yeah, that, that, that did not work. But Somebody got a seasoning in Yeah, it was injury. like the very first time, literally. <laughs> like it was the very first ever XFL play. Uh, he was like, well, that didn't work. But, but other things like this. Uh, have worked. So what's going to happen is the kicker remains at the 35-yard line where he has been kicking off from in the past, but the coverage team is lining up ahead of him, like 25 yards ahead of him on the opponent's 40-yard line, and the receiving team all, I don't know, nine or ten players, however many you're putting so in there. It just depends. No, it's you can it's got to be, it's gotta be a, at least nine. Yeah, it's I think it's got to be nine. Guys back. Yep. So has to line up between the 30 and the 35-yard line. So basically 10 to 15 yards away uh, from, from the kicking team. And then the kicker kicks the ball. And there's basically, uh, if it goes in the end zone, it's an automatic touchback. It goes out to the 30, I think, is what the rule is. And so you're trying really not to kick it in the end zone. You're trying to drop it there inside the five-yard line, uh, if at all possible. Um and so it's called the landing zone between the 20 and Starts the Starts at the 30 yes. if you kick into the end zone. There you go. Yes. So teams can station two returners back there. Coverage team can't move uh, until the ball hits the ground or a player in the landing zone or the end zone. So yeah, all that to say, I, I hope you followed along, but uh, if you've watched any of the XFL, you know what it is. And again, this is another thing that you can go online. You can find perfect examples of very, very, and it's very one quickly. Of, you watch it two or three times, and then you get it. Right. Because, because it's, when you explain it, it's not quite the same as yeah, just it, seeing it. It sounds super complicated. How is this ever going to work? But it's but not complicated it's, but when it's you not. see it. It's not. So, so what they're trying to do, chap, here is they're trying to take away more high-speed collisions. And kickoff returns are one of the plays that always have more high-speed collisions. You know, you're going to get them typically. I think Matt brought one up just now with the Michael Pittman play in the secondary. You see high-speed collisions in various plays all the time, but on every kickoff return, you see high-speed collisions because people start just sprinting down the field and they go 20 yards before finally someone kind of turns around and is just standing still and is about to take the full brunt of a... The, these are the most athletic guys on the team. You know, the 240-pound, 230-pound linebackers. It's a linebacker. It's a tight end. It's a DB. This is Saguna Luby, like, charging right. at you straight. Right. Like, he's a fast dude. He's a big dude. And he's going to hit you square on. And it's going to hurt. And so that's what the NFL is trying to take away with with, with this uh, with these new rules. And they've addressed this the kickoffs before, before they really neutered it. But, like, with the, the wedge blocking, you couldn't have the wedge blocking and all that. So, so yeah, they're, they're trying <laughs> – they're trying to, to legislate safety into an extremely violent sport. Right. Which I understand. I understand. 
my my first thought, and I'm watching it in my head, and I've seen some of the some of the replays of the XFL is strategy is going to be so important because if you've got a returner who's got that good quick short burst or short area burst or whatever he's gone if he gets past the first line he's gone so i I would guess the the kicking team's going to have to peel back a couple of guys so you've got some a safety net back there it's really going to be interesting and all of a sudden do you put your better athletes do you put tyreek hill out there because there's not as much of a a concern about getting blown up from a guy running 30 yards at you right and again, if he gets if he gets through, somebody I was listening to the radio on the way in. It's like cover zero where uh, the the New England game with Jonathan Taylor. Remember the long touchdown that sealed it. I do. You get through the line of scrimmage and there's nobody there. Make one guy miss. So there's going to be a lot of strategy involved. And I think the league is probably going to get what they want: fewer injuries and more explosive plays. Uh, the Matt and I were talking before we went on the air. There's going to be some unintended consequences. I don't know what those might be, but there always are. Yep, we'll, we'll figure it out. As, as and we're, it's not us; it's the uh, special teams coaches right. across the league. So Brian Mason is going to have to go to work on this. And does, does he bring in some former XFL coaches? He might who have dealt with this. Yeah. just as an advisor, I'm sure. I'm sure that's not out of the realm of possibility. And the first thing I would do if I was him, like you go and you watch tape of every single kickoff in the XFL. That, that looked like this. And, and you see what happened. And, and then you, you go sign their best XFL returner. Darn right. To your yeah. Special teams. Yeah, for real. Like, you're, it, cause, cause this is completely different, Matt. Different. Like, it is, it, it's still keeping the kickoff in the game, which the fans want. And I think players want too, because it, it's, it's an important play and it can be a great boon for your team or bust, as the case may be. But, but it's going to be, it, it's, it's a kickoff in name and kind of in appearance. But the strategies are going to be completely different once we figure it out. Well, and what we've seen, what, last season they started the the, the fair catch rule on kickoffs. And so, I mean, in most cases, I thought you would be crazy to not just call for the fair catch, take the ball to the 25. Because there are so few kicks. uh, They have good hang time. The the coverage team's getting down there. There are so few kicks that are really, really well returnable. And, And so you can understand why there weren't many returns last year compared to the last you know decade or decade and a half of football especially and so th- this is another way to to kind of uh, change the approach so uh in that uh in light of that uh claim that there are a few kick kickoff returns in the nfl now you are right um the the most kickoff returns per game in the nfl last year the green bay packers had 1.8 returns per game that was it less than two kickoff returns per game and you're, you're typically receiving i don't know Four, four, four or five, four to six, somewhere in that range, kicks a game. So they're re- returning less than two. I tweeted this out. So if you guys, if you guys saw my tweet, uh, who do you think had the fewest kick returns in the NFL last year? The fewest. I don't know. Your Indianapolis oh. Colts had the fewest, had a half of a return per game. So they probably had eight or nine kick returns for the entire year. And you might think in some aspect, well, maybe that's because they lost Isaiah Rodgers even before the season. He's your kickoff returner. And maybe that's true. Maybe you're thinking, well, maybe it's because they lost Dallas Flowers after four games, but he only returned one kick in those first four games anyway himself. So so he was not returning them at that point of the season either. This seems to be to have been more of a strategy thing and a Brian Mason thing based on, Matt, what you said just a few minutes ago, that a fair catch gets you to the 25 automatically right there. Or teams are kicking it into the end zone as well or deep into the end right. zone at that point against you. So um, so, so the Colts are, are one team that is really going to have to uh, actually really change the strategy here uh, on, on kickoff returns from a team that only had a half a kickoff return per game to one that's probably going to have somewhere between uh, three and six because in the XFL – uh, I've got the stats right here that was posted by Mike Clay, by the way. So credit to Mike Clay of uh, of ESPN that out of he put like all 40 teams, all 32 NFL teams and all eight teams in the XFL on one chart. All eight XFL teams had more kickoff returns per game than any one of the NFL teams. So I said the Green Bay Packers had the most 1.8 returns per game. The fewest returns per game in the XFL was 3.6. It was like double uh, what 
was happening in the NFL. So you're going to get more returns in this format. Because nine. Nine. The Colts had nine. Nine total returns yep. all last year. There you go. Boom. Um, they're going to have nine in probably two or three games uh, this year. And, you know, if you're a team that just doesn't want to mess with this, you just kick the ball out of the end zone and they get the ball at the 30-yard line. Right? Yep. Mm-hmm. So <coughs> you could argue, maybe, and maybe we'll see that excuse me the guy the teams who return it that are good at it they get the ball to the forty I don't know whatever mm-hmm. to where maybe you think well it, this is dumb let's just <laughs> knock the heck out of the ball and start at the thirty and, and they they've got studies Frank Reich went through this one time with me the the percentages how they increase scoring increase. Mm-hmm. Five yards, ten yards, where your starting line of scrimmage is, and it's 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 really incredible how starting from the twenty is so much harder than the thirty. You're only talking one more first down, right? That's a big deal. Mm-hmm. It really is, and that's why I really think that special teams coaches and head coaches are going to have to go back to the XFL. We're going to see so much of that in off-season work, yep, training camp, and then we're going to see in those these first free the, the, the three preseason games, yeah. What does it look like? Right. So I'm how, sure. How are you doing? I'm sure we're going to bring it up to Shane throughout the off season right. at, at some point for sure, and he's going to say, "Well, we're doing our due diligence." You know, we're because he doesn't know at that point. Like I, I at, at many times, like I will say, NFL coaches know they'll just get. They're trying to give you the runaround. Not this time. Not this time. Like legitimately, they don't know. They, they just they, found, they just found out. They're going to have some idea because they're going to study what happened in the XFL. Right. He's going to he's going to say, uh, we're, we're, "We don't know. We're going to check the tape." But, yeah, exactly. We'll, we'll, we'll look at the tape. We'll and, Literally, they will look at every XFL return, and it, then it's probably going to take three or four weeks of the NFL season for teams to really get a handle on what they want to do because it could work differently in, in this league than it did in the XFL. At some point, and the Colts are good about this, is we'll get Brian Mason just to sort of get his idea. And he's like, hey, not man. he's not going to tell us <laughs> a great the sub- strategy, but, but he can give us his input about, you know, how does this change things a lot. Mm-hmm. and all that and, and maybe he will go into how you start like you talked the evaluation analysis I don't think he's going to tell us they're going to bring in these guys or whatever to help with with it but he's he's the one that if they let him the Colts let him can give us some pretty good insight on what how this will change special teams and, and kick returns yeah I, I this is not not a slight at at brian mason at all because i think he was very very, very fine in, in his first year here but i like i would love to have a guy like bubba ventrone on my staff oh, like if i'm yeah. if i'm was, around the nfl like tremendous to, to actually give like serious like good football chops and like i said i'm not slighting brian mason at all because he's like, he been was an NFL fine. Coach one year but yeah exactly but but bubba ventrone has been one yeah. for a long time he's been special teams focused for a long time um, I, I think that having guys like him around the league is going to be really valuable for specific teams wherever they are. Dave Tobe in Kansas City is another one, but, who's but John Fossil, who's I'm trying who who he's he, he was a guy I've seen quoted a lot. He's a special teams guy, Jim Fossil's son, yeah. who was here a year or two at least in in training camp mm-hmm. a, 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 as an assistant. So those guys, all of a sudden, those guys because the league has spent so much time mm-hmm. minimizing, I guess, right like th- this portion of the game and now all of a sudden it's like no no we're gonna go and, and it isn't go incrementally Th- this is we're drastic. all in <laughs> that's <a> great term <laughs> i couldn't resist i, I apologize know. so so to be determined on exactly how the, this impacts the colts but we are all very inter- interested to who's see who's your kick guy right now josh downs i mean if, if he had a game tomorrow there like i think so well dallas flowers might be since he's coming back from injury but i think josh right. downs might be yeah, yeah he could be in that list um, I don't know. Do you, do maybe, you draft a kick returner? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe you draft Isaac Garendo, the kid from Avon High School, the six foot, two hundred twenty pound, four point four forty, whatever it is, running and and say make, go. Make one guy miss and boy, yeah. you're you're running. And see you later. Let's it, go. It, it'd be interesting too. I mean, honestly, with kickoffs being what they were last season, you could uh, go get yourself a snack. You uh, did, and then the, missed the because you weren't going to miss matter. anything because that ball was going to be on the twenty-five yep. yard line. Didn't matter. This gives some interest to that play again, I think. Mm-hmm. So some kickoff scenarios also breaking this down e- even further, which I, I know is exactly what everyone wants. Um, the landing zone kickoffs must be returned. There are no fair catches in that area. So if the ball lands in between the twenty and the and, and the goal line, you have to bring it back. 
Uh, there's no longer a wave the fair catch and, and go out to the 25. Kickoffs that go into the landing zone and roll into the end zone must be returned or downed, and downing the ball would bring it out to the 20 only. So it's not going to the 30 at that point. So there's a, but, there's, but it has to have hit that landing zone. Right, right. Yes, it does. Um, kick on uh, kickoffs that land in the end zone or down to the 30 kickoffs that go out of the back of the you end can zone return it from the end zone. Mm-hmm. Or, but the, yes, this is, yes. if, this is if you down it, right? right. It's a 30. Right. If a kick does not reach the landing zone, it's treated like an out of bounds kick and the receiving team gets the ball at the 40. Right. So if you just completely dwarf the kick. Yeah. Which I, I, I don't think we'd see that very often. I don't but think so either. You, you could have a, a super windy day yeah. or, or, or get, you know, just get a bad uh, I don't know. kick on the ball, I guess. You never know. Like, it could, yeah. I, like, mean, I, I don't want to say it never happens pumps. because weird, weird yeah. stuff happens. You guys know. shank punts, weird things happen in sports. Griff guys Whalen slip. tries to snap the ball to exactly. Cole Anderson. So, man, they're, like, seared in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know, and I'm sorry for bringing it up. But, but like I and said, Colt just, Anderson was named. Was he, is he a special teams coach? Yeah, somewhere? he's a special teams coach now. And all I could all I could think of, it, and all people did was put that that picture out there. Poor guy. Oh, uh, and like he, like, and, but but he was such a special teams ace for a right. long time for this team. That's why he's a coach now somewhere. Right. University of Montana boy. Where was he from? Was he from Haver, Montana? The Blue Ponies of Haver. Or was that Mark you've Mariani? Got, you've got too much information. Too head. much information on Montana specifically is what I have uh, kicking around in my head. So this is a one-year trial rule that could be revisited. Will be revisited. Three in the teams voted next against year. it. Mm-hmm. So I think they said if six more teams say eh, that didn't work very well, they would well, they, they have they, to have twenty-four of thirty teams. To, is it eighty percent, seventy-five percent? Yeah, yeah, something. Like so, that. so we'll see what happens next off season. Um, could be renewed for twenty twenty-five. Uh, onside kicks can only happen in the fourth quarter when a team is behind. A uh, kicking team must declare its intent. There will be no more surprise onside kicks. 15 years too late Hank Basket, for the hello. Indianapolis Colts. Sorry, but uh, mm-hmm. but it is now a rule moving forward. So it won't happen again. You got that going for you. So, so onside kicks are virtually gone. Bur- virtually, yes. Almost completely gone. So so we'll see uh, what happens there. They, they could who, That could be something they change again and give, like there's been talk about or some proposals about you get a fourth and 10 or a fourth, fourth and 15, and 20, fourth and 20, mm-hmm. which would be a heck of a conversion. But yeah, we'll, 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 we'll see if this, if that well, you get a fourth changes. and 20 and then you, you have a hip drop tackle and it's automatic first and down. First down exactly. there you go. See, there it, work, go. it works. Yeah. These, these, a, these go hand in hand. Still it's probably a, a higher point. conversion rate than what we've seen in onside kicks. Might, that's true. They, they Since just, they changed that balance rule. Yeah. On the line, it for just, real. Really it, took it, that it out is, the game. It's virtually impossible to get. Uh, the challenge system has a slight change. Teams will get a third challenge after just one successful challenge. Again, with the old rule, the teams had to hit both their challenges to earn a third challenge. Now, if you get one, you're basically uh, retooled that one, right. which is which is fine. And like we, we haven't seen games slow down dramatically with challenges at all. Like games are pretty much three hours chap like clockwork. We we always talk about in in the press. Well, this game's going quick. Exactly. Yeah, no, nope, it's going to slow down. It'll be three oh one. Exactly. It always is. But uh, so so I I don't anticipate big changes with that. Um, but but we'll see because it's it's so rare that a team challenges even twice uh, in a game anyway. Um, so so that will be beneficial for maybe a couple, a handful of times throughout this season. Uh, the trade deadline is now pushed back one week to the Tuesday after week nine. It had been week eight, so there's one more week for teams to figure out what they want to do. Are you still in it, or are you going to dump? Exactly. So there's just one more week of... And I don't know if it had been week eight, chap, for uh, even when it was a 16-week season. I, th- I think so, that, that's part of the reason they made the yeah. change was to... Mirror 16 that, game season that uh, that change that change a little bit more. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And and if the owners get their way, they'll have a 20 game regular season. They'll move it back to week after week 10 in, in a couple of years. So uh, we'll, we'll see about that. Uh, plays with a passer down by contact or out of bounds before throwing are now reviewable plays. Um, so I thought I saw that intentional grounding was also reviewable. OK, which I don't think it is now. OK, that's possible. It, it, it may be. Um, Come on, there, Matt. There, there, there was Jeez. a lot of information to go yeah. through the owners' meeting, so I tried to yeah. try, tried yeah. to pick Get and choose the, the most important yeah. ones. But. Uh, reviews are of clear and obvious visual evidence showing the play clock expired before the snap. Well, that'll be fun because yeah. that that happens like frequently. They've already said there. Eh, there's a yeah, that goes to zero, but then there's like a eh, there's a like, little pause. It, exactly, like the umpire is like looks at it and then mm-hmm. looks, looks down, down, and so it like clear and obvious. If I, you what, see what's that zero, mean? you 
It's done. Yeah, right? Zero, my it, man. The only way I can see that it would be clear and obvious is if they added tenths to that clock. Yeah. Like you would like a shot clock. And um, then that could give you that gives you a little bit of wiggle room there on that on that other end. I don't know. Yeah, let's see here. Um, Peacock will exclusively stream the week one game in Brazil on Friday, September sixth. I've got a subscription to Peacock, so I'm okay with it. Well, the Eagles will play in that game, so I'm going to have to make sure I have mine. Uh, although you get that three month free subscription, and then there we go. It. Perfect. Uh, has yet to be announced. Um, so I, I know that somebody in our, uh, in our office has a Peacock subscription though, uh, because we use it to bring in IndyCar, uh, oh. stuff all the time. Uh, so, so maybe I can just, uh, still can't watch the Indy 500 live on Peacock, nope, right? Still can't do it. Not, not here locally. You need a VPN. Not, not unless you use a VPN. Exactly. Uh, we're not, no, it's, uh, that's above that's, my that's pay grade. Exactly. Uh, I'm sure years. a lot of people do. Exactly. It's people usually, in it, our generation, you, usually, like, it's not it, a big deal. You, it's usually my responsibility to live blog the race for the right. digital team, which, um, the radio coverage is great, but also kind of hard to get a handle on. Mm -hmm. It's kind of abstract, whereas yeah. on TV you can really kind mm -hmm. of get a feel for things. And, and so, yeah, when I've done that, I've, I've used a VPN to make it look like I'm dialing from Buffalo, New York, mm -hmm. and then I can watch the race. It's, it's pretty silly. Prime Video returns as the home of Thursday Night Football and will stream a wild card game. Um, people loved it, of course, when Peacock streamed the Miami-Kansas City playoff game last year. So we'll see exactly how many streamers. Like, stre here's the deal. Like, streaming is here. It is here to stay. It is going to stay. And the big companies that own these streaming services, like uh, NBC Universal, whoever that owns Peacock, mm -hmm. they want Peacock subscriptions. And if they have a deal with the NFL to carry their games throughout the year, they're going to push something onto their streaming service. It's just going to happen. You can complain about it all I you want. It. I hate I, it, exactly. but you're exactly right. But but it's it's not going anywhere. It's just not. Remember when uh, when ABC. Oh, when when Monday Night Football went to ESPN, like it wasn't it, it was it was a big deal that that was going off of cable and going to ESPN, and because people not everybody had cable back then when I was growing up, and and, and now now it's it's the streaming is the new frontier, and, and it, people are going to push it. It's going to happen. So I, I'll just say, like uh, in in the most uh, loving way possible, get over it. Prime did the playoff game last year, right? The, the Miami. Uh I thought it was Peacock. I okay, that. Peacock. Okay, well, and I was probably a one. I did Peacock because of the AT and T didn't have whatever at the time, but I kept it. And normally, people do the three the three month free subscription and then they cancel it. I thought I saw something where they said Peacock said like twenty percent of the people that started that kept it. Yep, and that's the intent. Exactly. So, they hope that you forget. <laughs> and just let or, it go. Or, or, or you, you want to keep it. Or, or you want to keep it. A lot of times you're, I, I cuss and then I've got to pay a month because I forgot to cancel. But yeah, it, it's in, in 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 your next point here, Merry Christmas from the NFL. Two games on Christmas, a Wednesday. Wednesday. Players are going to love that. They're very excited. I but can already tell. I, the, people need to, you need to accept my default is that whatever the NFL get wants, it's going to get. You know, an 18 game season is going to happen. It it is, and it just is. Players can complain. Players do complain, but but the if you if you pull the union, the players, however many thousands of players that is, a good enough portion of them will say, oh, "I get an extra paycheck." or whatever on, on an 18 game season because a lot of the people in the NFL are in their first contract. That's what they want. They, they don't they care, care about. about 10 years. But this thing about Wednesdays. So now they've played. They've not played Tuesday, right? They've Has there been a Tuesday, Tuesday game? I don't think so. Now they will have played every every day because they were. Remember when Fridays was supposed to be a, only for high schools and all that? And they played mm -hmm. the, was it the Black Friday? Black Friday game, game this yep. year, Amazon Prime. They, yep. they, don't, they don't quit doing it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the idea that now four teams are going to play three games in eleven days, and it'll be no. If, if you play on that on, on the on the Christmas, you're you're playing Saturday, so you got your normal four day, your your normal four your days. Normal four. You talk to players on a seven day scale. You play Sunday, Monday's a day you might come if it, it, maybe you get the day off if if it's late in the season. Tuesday's a day off, and Wednesday. Your body is sort of getting back to where you can operate. We saw the Colts last year do walkthroughs on Wednesdays. Yes, throughout it got, much it got of the to be more, more than right. not. 
And that's just a case of these coaches realize it, it's rest and rehab, recovery. And with the Thursday game, with now the Wednesday game, you just take those like two days, and that's it seems like that's just two days. No, it's not. These guys watch a game and what these guys go through. You know, we're in the locker room. We see these guys walk around with ice and ace bandages and all this stuff. It takes you a couple of days to get over, you know, 60 or 70 collisions at high speed. So it's that that's where the disconnect is. Money rules. They can talk all they want about player safety. We're taking the horse collar, this drop, hip drop tackle. The, the bottom line is it's if it makes financial sense, they do it. Yep. And and money and games on Christmas make financial sense because last year, those ratings were through the roof for the three games open, that were on the you, Monday. You, you celebrate Christmas in the morning with the family, and yep. then you get on the, the the couch or your recliner and watch football. Exactly. I mean, the the NBA has been a Christmas thing for for a good long time, and the N- NBA gets gets fair ratings on Christmas. Don't get me wrong, but there's a difference between the NBA mm-hmm. and the NFL. There's a difference between the NFL and all the leagues. Yep. There's a difference between the NFL and everything. Everything yeah, go, else. Go and look at the probably the TV ratings from the combine. Yep. They were probably higher than most NBA games. Yep. So Very much so. Could have been high. It, it might have been higher than some of the NCAA tournament games. Unbelievable. Although that one might might might, might be close. Uh, the NCAA men's tournament always or Caitlin, draws some, some Caitlin, good. Uh, yeah, Caitlin Clark too. Caitlin yeah, Clark I, don't, too. I don't know what 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 they drew for, uh, but I know it was a good number. Sure, especially when compared to women's tournaments in the past. Um, so so our, our immediate future takes us to April 15th with OTAs beginning for teams uh, that already have their head coach, which, of course, includes the Indianapolis Colts. Not not an early uh, thing this year. Oh, also, uh, good good news for the Colts. Chap, they do not have to go to uh, to training camp one oh, week early. I meant to, meant to add that. Yes, Forgot we'll to. throw that in there here near the end of our Colts Blue Zone podcast. No Hall of Fame game for the Indianapolis Colts, although we suspected that it might have been the, a thing. Canton wanted Colts Bears they did that, uh-huh. that was their first choice and then you know they, they've got Houston and, and, and the Bears so you, took, Bear. you still get the Bears entourage and yeah it does it, it, the Bears had to be there based on well, who they, they got they three, guys, they yeah, three exactly. of the, had to be the Bears. six uh, yep. inductees or whatever it is and so yeah I, I can't tell if the Colts I, I would think the Colts would be happy they're not in it maybe if you're the coaching staff you would have you would have liked to have had the fourth preseason game. I, uh, maybe give, give, give it an extra game to, to learn that new kickoff system. Yeah, yeah well, but, but, then, but then the downside of the extra game is you come to camp a week early. Right. Yeah. Which I think that I think they've they've kind of settled in the fact that camp is long enough the way it is. So, but uh, still, so the game's on the August 1st, and then they'll have the ceremonies on the 3rd with Dwight Freeney. And it's going to be uh, the Houston Texans there playing the Chicago Bears. And, 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 they've, and they've got a guy going in the hall. Exactly, so and it's their first it, guy it's going their in first the hall. Guy. So, so it, it'll, it'll work out. They, so they should be there in, in the Hall of Fame game. Uh, let, let them go to let camp. Let them have throw. it and hope the field's in good enough condition oh, they can geez, play the game. And, and, and hope the, that the sports directors and anchors down in Houston have the updated cell phone numbers for uh, certain players who might uh, reach out to them, telling them, I I can still remember standing outside the locker room, not knowing what we're doing, and then players started texting uh-huh. what was going on. Yep, like, ah, we, we, we ain't playing, man. <laughs> this ain't happening, dude. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, that was something that uh, ver- went very south very quickly and uh, hopefully certainly never happens again. Um, just a couple weeks until the NFL draft, April 25th. We are who less they pick- than a month. Who are they picking? Position? <sighs> Forget player, position. Like, looking at them now, like I, I, st- I still say I, if Brock Bowers falls to them, that that's makes it very difficult. More not and more, to take I see him. him going to the Jets at ten. Yeah, I, that would make a lot of sense. Um, but I, I think if Bowers is gone and the top three receivers are gone, I, I think that they're going to take a shot at the cornerback that they like. They'll best. get the first or second corner. Yeah, I, I don't know who it's going to be. If they love Quinion Mitchell, like he's a little shorter than I think Bauer usually likes. If Terry and Arnold falls there, he's really intriguing. Uh, Nate Wiggins from Clemson, I think, is an athletic freak that they could like. Cooper Jean uh, from Iowa is maybe by many accounts the the most intriguing, but got had a serious injury. So I, I it's hard for me to to pick one, but but I'm sure that the Colts 
have one in in, in their mind of of all those guys that they like above the and others. And then you can get a receiver in round two. And then they take a receiver in round. I I like I would love like if if, if I was a fan of the Colts. I, I keep saying this. If I was a fan, like I, people know, I grew up half an hour south of Philadelphia. I, I, I grew up as a be- massive Eagles fan. If I was, like, if my Eagles were picking here in this sim- similar sim- scenario, I would want a weapon for my new young quarterback. I just, I, I would. would, I would err on the side of more is better. Exactly. Than that, and you say it's a deep receiver draft, like you can get somebody good in the second it's not round. The same. I'd rather have somebody great in the first round. Than somebody very good in the second exactly. round. Exactly. Like that that's what I'd want. Well what does that make me stupid? Maybe it does. I don't know. Yes, Dave. Exactly. It makes me an idiot. And that's <laughs> I would be such a bad GM. I know me too. I would be so bad. Uh, yeah. All of us would completely. be completely and that that's why we're we're here chatting. And but but we have we have our own special skills. But I saw somebody had him t- uh, uh Matt Miller who who who's <laughs> Does really good. good. He had him taking a defensive tackle. The guy Byron Murphy from Texas. Which okay, but they just re-signed Grover. They just brought in Raquan Davis. Mm -hmm. And you're you're, you're probably gonna. You're probably gonna. uh, He's a. He's a. I don't count him. (laughs) But 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 then they're gonna probably extend to Force Buckner at some point. So Mm -hmm. that that would be to me as much as Ballard loves. The lines mm-hmm. that would be overkill in my in my estimation be, be a little odd yes but if they're going fully all in on anthony richardson jonathan taylor we, we've talked about the possibility of offensive line because this is a very strong tackle draft and moving someone inside but okay, again you that, take, then you take get, a receiver at 15 and a tackle at 46 yes yeah so so yeah, yeah, there, there's there's so many possibilities like just, i lean, just bradley hates i know he, he would hate my approach <laughs> i lean toward cornerback to be honest just looking at the roster now because you need help out you you need some more guys there you need somebody that you feel a little bit better with i think uh as as a more as an important player and they haven't signed anybody if they sign someone sign who's a receiver with the idea you're gonna score 35 a game yeah yeah <laughs> exactly outscore them come on right. have fun Get those new kickoff returns and and see what you can do with them. So so we'll see. Uh, plenty plenty more to discuss that over the coming so weeks. We all I'm know sure, they're going to trade down into the Matt, second round. Stop. They only well, have and again. There the idea is it, it could it, if if the corner. I think both areas are deep enough. Certainly receiver is to where you could fall back to not too far twenty. Let's not let's not be stupid. Let's not. Yeah, no, let's not be stupid. You should text Chris Ballard that. Just tell him Chris, not to be don't be stupid, stupid please. <laughs> but they they could very well think that they're the they're, the depth. They're not going to get the top three receivers again. Five quarterbacks. Right. Do the math. Five quarterbacks. Three receivers. There's three eight. receivers. Two tackles. Nine ten. A defensive end. Eleven. Brock Bowers. Twelve. See, you're you're almost there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so so they're gonna they're in such a good spot. But don't don't dilute because again when you when you go back. Unless there's a guy you really, really love and maybe have a higher grade on than everybody else, the further you go back, the the, the less the less you're going to get just by the way it works. So we will go talk plenty of draft over the coming weeks before that draft in uh, one month out in Detroit uh, here uh, on the Colts Blue Zone podcast. Follow you think, us. You think, you think Indy ever gets the draft? Don't they? Like you would think so, but at the same time, they keep getting the combine. So I think that's, that could be that the NFL a, can say, "Nah, you guys get the combine that's a good every point. year." Of course, when they take the combine say away, and they want to take the combine away. Yeah, when they take the combine away, then maybe. Show. But they're like, "Well, you've had the combine for for forty years, so so let, 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 let's give it five or ten. Good, good point. You know, I, I could totally see the NFL do, doing that. Um, but but at the same time, the, like the NFL is a good relationship with Indy, you know, and they a good relationship so with Jim Mercer. Stupid when they move this combine. I, that's I know it's what, stupid. Yeah, but, uh, we're, we're we're grumbling to the finish here on the Colts Blue Zone podcast. You we do best. I've had, I've had a good day. I'm happy today, so I shouldn't I shouldn't have finished on a downer. I'm I sorry. can't complain, but sometimes I do. <laughs> that's right. On the Colts Blue Zone podcast, you can follow us on Twitter at Colts Blue Zone. Uh, Mike Chapel is at mchapel51. Matt Adams is at statamatty. I'm at Dave G underscore sports. Read all of Mike Chapel's work online, fox59.com, cbs4indy.com, and we'll see you next week on the Colts Blue Zone podcast. <laughs>